Hey guys, how are you? This is Richard from Official Nautil Channel and Reefs.com and we are at Healthy Aquatics Marine Institute with Dr. Charlie Gregory to talk about proper fish acclimation and proper medication. So a couple of days ago, at, on Facebook, um, I saw this notification from Carolina Aquatics. And for those of you guys who do not know what's going on in Hawaii, there is a ban that's going on. And I had this dream fish of mine for years. It's Achilles Tang. But these are super finicky, and I just didn't want to get them because there's so much work. But I had this fear of missing out because we don't know when this ban will ever end. So um, I contacted Chris. Carolina Aquatics this is Chris. Can I help you? Hey Richard, what's up? Yeah, man, we've got some awesome Achilles tanks in right now. Yeah, man, I'll make it happen. All right, thank you. And I was able to get a nice specimen from him. And now with this specimen, we're gonna show you guys how to properly acclimate and to treat um, copper sensitive animals. And now I'm gonna have a Dr. Charlie Gregory here and explain the whole procedure. Hi, thanks Richard. Uh, Achilles are fragile. They're also uh, finicky, right when you first get them, tough to get eating, and a bit sensitive to a lot of the medications. I don't want to run a high dose of copper on them prophylactically to try to clear any parasites. Being a tang, they're likely to carry cryptocarrion. They can have brooklynella, uranema, oodinium. Another tricky part about this fish is it's uh, a, a mean fish, so you can't put them in with other fish, uh, especially into a pretty blank open quarantine tank because there might be uh, behavioral issues. So where we're gonna go with the Achilles tang that Richard's brought us is into its own 25 gallon independently plumbed system and we're gonna treat with a very light copper, something uh, on the order of 0.15 to 0.2. Uh, we've got a couple of very specific test kits um, and then we're gonna watch real close and if it starts to get cloudy eyes or uh, breathe heavily or anything like that. Uh, we could do microscopic diagnosis and uh, assess if it's got maybe a bacterial infection or something that the light copper isn't uh, treating. Now tell me, um, how is acclimation so important to any, any new rivals of fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So an Achilles tank too, it's a super uh, high energy fish. Something you gotta consider is the stress of being shipped in a box overnight in the dark. And, uh, and then opened up and put together into a, a system to try to integrate it into a new long-term display. We're gonna do drip acclimation. We're going to keep it relatively dim in the environment. And we're not gonna manhandle them, but I certainly wanna pull the fish out and have a look at it before we even start the acclimation process. Okay. If there's any open, open lesions wounds. or anything like that, we might need to do antibiotics if there's a bit of fin rot. Uh, or any sign of parasites, we might choose other treatment options before we even uh, put it into the regular acclimation system. Now, is there anything that we should do or we should avoid when we do acclimation? There's a couple of medications that are standard protocol on some people's acclimation procedures, things like nitrofurazone or methylene blue or even formalin. Um, we're not gonna do any of those with this Achilles tang. Uh, Carolina Aquatics has a good reputation. Um, from what Richard has told me, he's had a lot of good experiences with fish from there. Yes. And so at the end of the day, uh, we're going to just have a good look and hopefully there's nothing uh, imperfect about the fish. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to just proceed with a standard drip acclimation using aquarium water uh, from the system which this fish is destined. Would you recommend putting an air bubbler inside? inside these uh, acclimations or no? Uh, no, the, the main concern too, what you're, what you're describing, it's the metabolism of the fish brings the buffering capacity of the water really low, mm -hmm. uh, which on the one hand is a good thing because that makes it so that ammonia is tied up more as ammonium. Mm -hmm. Buffer goes down, pH goes down, acidity goes down, and uh, ammonia is more the less toxic form, ammonium. But as you start to acclimate the fish to a new system where there is buffer and there is uh, higher pH, that all of a sudden renders the ammonia that's present um, into the ammonia radical form and much more toxic to the fish. So you gotta be careful about that. 
Um, this is a relatively large bag for a medium-sized fish. Um, and most people bringing fish home from the fish store don't need to worry about things like this. It's just if you're unbagging the fish after a trans-Pacific flight uh, or... Or ordering online. Like oh, that's a good point. Yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, live absolutely. aquariums and stuff like that. Saltwater yeah, fish. Ordering online. online. Yeah, those kind of places. Like if you're ordering from online, don't use air bubblers. They'll they'll spike ammonia. Not good for fish. <laughs> right, right, right. Another good point. Uh, you can bind the ammonia using one of the ammonia binding chemicals. Things uh, even in tap water conditioner like Amquel or uh, Prime by Seachem. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just really important that there isn't copper already in the water because if you put one of those ammonia binders into oh. copper, specifically Cooper Mean, oh, it's it'll, it'll right run there. it to copper one plus and be very toxic for the fish. Right. All right. Anything else that we should look out for? Uh, there's a Not certain much. rate at which you want to acclimate the fish. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going for two hours of acclimation and you want to triple the amount of water that's in there with them, so say you have one gallon of water, at the end you want to have four is that triple? Four gallons of water? <laughs> you want to add three times mm -hmm. what's already in there, uh, at which point it's pretty safe to add the fish to the system where it's going to be living. Gotcha. And commonly, like a lot of people just dump the bag on top of the water. Now, is this a good practice method or no? Like for temperature um, acclimation? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, the temperature is a source of stress. If you go from 72 to 78 degrees, uh, that can give the fish some, some serious stress. Uh, when coming down to uh, a lower temperature, uh, you can do that pretty quickly. When going from low to high, that's uh, a scary thing for, for most fish. Mm -hmm. Something to consider, yeah, you could float the bag or you can just, it, a lot of times it's pretty close anyway and you don't need to worry too much about matching 76 to 78 degrees, but definitely using a thermometer, a laser thermometer, a digital thermometer. Make sure you're at least ballpark, and if not, um, get there, either by floating yeah. or uh, you can even put um, bags of ice and stuff in. Really? Uh, not gotcha. too All right, guys, now we're gonna start acclimating the fish. Stay tuned, we'll get right to it. It's like Christmas. <laughs> so Richard got this Achilles Tang uh, overnight shipped from North Carolina, Carolina Aquatics. Um, we're going to have a quick look at the fish to make sure it is flawless. Triple bagged, I mean business. This is a monster. What size did you think you were getting? Um, maybe like three, four inch? Yeah, it's like a six, seven inch fish. Six, seven? Is it gonna be all right, man? This is the new dominant fish in your tank. No, uh, no problem. <laughs> Whoa. I have a 220, so. All right. Well, 210. It's actually, it's, it's too big for me to be comfortable with this. He's gonna go in there, bang himself up, so instead we're just going to have a look from the top. look at pH just for funsies. It's gonna take a little while, so. Um, dude, look at your fish. This is a really nice fish. Yeah. <laughs> he's a little, he's a little, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, like tired color? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh but wow. Look at the face, man. Yeah. This one's very precise and has a high sensitivity, so it'll tell you the difference between 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0.2. Gotcha. It's the Lamotte test kit. Something like $22 on Amazon also. Um, the other good one is the Salifert test kit. Uh, there's a really good one called the Chemmetrics Ampule tests, but they're like a bucket test. Um, and then you can get the Hawk calorimeter, uh, which is around $450, $500, uh, but it's pretty accurate. This takes a few minutes to develop. Um, we will check it in maybe two minutes. Uh, 
already. So we did test the copper and it's at 0.1. So uh, I'm not sure if it's regular copper or cupramine, but it's not worth risking uh, an ammonia binder. Um, we can even test ammonia uh, here next to see where we're at. Um, generally, this is a pretty large amount of water that the fish came in. I'm not super concerned about the drip acclimation process we're doing. Um, any idea how long it was in transit? Was it 12 hours, 24 um, hours? A little less than 12 hours, about eight hours, I think. Okay, perfect. Uh, so we'll do a quick ammonia test, but uh, I think we're just gonna go forward with a regular uh, drip acclimation. We're gonna, not everybody has one of these on hand, but I happen to have a dissolved oxygen meter. And so just to make sure that things are going well with the Achilles tang, we're gonna monitor the dissolved oxygen. And we're ever vigilant about the trade-off between the need to put some bubbles into the bag for degassing. Uh, we need to put oxygen in, but if we put bubbles in there, we degas the carbon dioxide. By pulling carbon dioxide out, that's what raises the pH and potentially makes the ammonia toxic. Um, so we're gonna watch, it takes a minute to calibrate down, but uh, we'll get an idea of where the percent saturation of oxygen is. And if it's, uh, in the ocean, maximum saturation is 8.2 milligrams per liter oxygen. Um, but uh, if we get to be underneath five, I start to consider doing additional aeration for the fish. There's a couple of tricks around that. You can even do a little bit of hydrogen peroxide uh, to raise oxygen if you need to um, not stir up the, the water and off-gas CO2, uh, but let's not worry about that. As a veterinarian, I have access to some medical supplies and I don't love throwing away plastic. I'm a generally conscientious about the environment type of individual and so um, I've created a number of drip lines using uh, standard uh, IV drip set um, modulator here so I can increase and decrease the speed at which the drips are going. I have a little air stone on the end to add some weight and a, uh, a clamp to hold it onto the side of the bucket. This water is from the system in which this Achilles tank is going to be going to. Just start the siphon by uh, sucking water through. We'll be able to see water uh, dripping out here in a second. For those that don't have a dissolved oxygen meter, just watch your fish. If it starts to be breathing a lot faster, it's because dissolved oxygen is going down low. Um, if you acclimate the fish pretty rapidly over a half hour, an hour, uh, you shouldn't see tragic low dissolved oxygen. Um, but when you start to get two, three hours in, uh, which is often the case if you're acclimating something that's been in the box for a long time, be weary of uh, dissolved oxygen level. When we get in trans-Pacific shipments, the pH is often 5.5 to 6 inside of the bags with the fish. Uh, it's really technically difficult to acclimate those guys without creating an, a toxic ammonia situation because um, as we acclimate them, we're raising the pH and that puts the accumulated ammonia that's in the bag uh, from the ammonium, the less toxic phase, uh, into ammonia. And so straight transfer of the fish to clean water that is about the same temperature and pH uh, overall is a better option for uh, acclimating them to the system. Ultimately what you do is you move them from the bags that they're in into equal pH uh, clean salt water uh, that you've brought down uh, using either white vinegar or CO2. Uh, you can use muriatic acid if you want to be really economical, but that's a very powerful acid. Uh, and using a digital pH meter, you can pretty quickly uh, establish um, some brand new clean salt water that's a pH of 6.5 or whatever you need. And then you move the fish directly into it and then you acclimate that water to your system. Um, in that bath of low pH, you can put the things like methylene blue uh, or formalin. Uh, there's a, an industry uh, chemical called Quick Cure, which is formalin and malachite green. 
it was off the market for a while, but it's back now. It's a really um, good, uh, powerful antiprotozoan. It's an antibiotic in a couple of different capacities. You got to watch out, though. That stuff will lower the dissolved oxygen. Um, do run bubblers in the fresh, new salt water because you won't have an accumulation of ammonia in there, and you won't need to worry about off-gassing the CO2 and having uh, an ammonia spike. The enrofloxacin I just treated this Achilles tang with prophylactically is a veterinary prescribed drug. It's a very powerful antibiotic. Uh, options that you have over the counter as an aquarium hobbyist include Canaplex by Seachem, it's canamycin, um, used as directed, or I also like Maricin 2, minocyclin. Um, that's another broad spectrum antibiotic that generally deals with uh, the opportunistic bacterial strains that might jump into a fish's open wound if it was scratched during transport. We have the Achilles tang acclimating. It started at about 1.5 gallons of water, and we're gonna put four gallons of system water into it over the course of the next two hours. Got the antibiotic enrofloxacin to mitigate any opportunistic bacterial infections that might arise from being scratched or uh, slightly injured during transport. We've got the dissolved oxygen meter showing that the dissolved oxygen is around 11 milligrams per liter is because it was bagged with oxygen. Normal saturation is about eight milligrams per liter. Um, but we have a calibrated probe, and I'm, I'm surprised it's so high, but it'll probably go down over the course of the next hour or so. Uh, we confirmed that there was a little bit of copper in the water, 0.1 milligrams. And so we didn't add prime or amquil in there to bind any ammonia. We did test ammonia, and it was under 0.25 milligrams per liter. So we're not super worried about that. We're doing a three times uh, addition of new salt water from the system um, to the Achilles, and we'll go for about two hours. This is Dr. Charlie Gregory, a fish and coral veterinarian at the Healthy Aquatics Marine Institute. Thank you for watching this. Uh, we can all work together to keep fish and coral healthier and happier, and that makes us all better stewards of the ocean. Thank you very much, Richard Bach, aficionado. You guys are awesome.